This is Bob Nightingale from USA Today. You're listening to Locked Up Sports. Everybody, this is Don LaGreca from the Michael K Show. When it comes to talking sports, Bob Walters and Brett Grasso are the authority. Can't wait. When it comes to talking sports, they're the authority. It's Bob Walters and Brett Grasso. It's Locked Up Sports, and it starts now. Bring them out, bring them out, hey. Bring them out, bring them out, yeah. Bring them out, bring them out, hey. Bring them out. Here we go. Bob Walters from the Brian Gunzel Studios. This is Locked Up Sports. The Islanders get a huge win last night over the Rangers. But Peter Laviolette and the Rangers aren't happy with the way the game ended. We'll tell you why. Setback for Senga. Not surprised. As the Mets place him on the 60-day IL. And we speak with Dexter Henry from SNY, WFAN, and the New York Post about everything going on in the world of New York sports. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Bob Walters. How are you today? Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. If you're listening on the audio side, the podcast side, thank you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe on both and leave us a review. Tell us what you think of the show. Every little bit helps. Uh, Big show for you. We're going to get to Dexter Henry in just a moment, and it's a great spot. You're going to want to stick around for that. It's it's listen. He's a great guy. He's got a lot of information. He's got a, a ton of experience. And he gave us a solid 45 minutes so that you're going to really enjoy coming up in just a minute. But uh, listen, let's start with the Mets. The Mets are rained out today. Okay, they're rained out. They're going to make it up in September, the end of September, the 26th, to be honest with you. The Braves will have the division clinched. The Mets will have nothing to play for, and they probably will never even play the game, to be honest with you. The Mets today, and I listen, I told you. I told you this was going to happen. I told you as soon as he was getting close. There was going to be a setback, and it, it's going to be July when you when you first see Zenga. Well, a couple of days ago, we heard that he was he was throwing right. It was looking promising. It was sounding promising, and then what happened today? Mets get rained out, and they put Zenga on the sixty day DL with a setback, and now the earliest we will see him will be the end of May. And I'm telling you, it's not going to be the end of May either. You're looking at July, July. I have no medical degree. I have no inside knowledge of what's going on. I just know that it's the Mets. And what happens to the Mets? They have setbacks. They have bad injuries. They have bad breaks. July. Expect July, folks. And I told you this, and I knew it was going to happen. He was, they they, they did it as a roster move to to make room for another pitcher because he was originally on the 15-day IL. He was going to be coming off of that in, I think, two or three days. Now, I don't, he wasn't going to pitch right away, right? Because he was going to still have to go down and have his spring training and everything. But, but th- this is not surprising. And now he's back. He's on the, he's on the 60 day DL and you're looking at end of May, beginning of June. And, and that's not when it's going to happen either. July. I'm telling you. you, you all laugh at me and think I'm crazy. It's July. Okay. Um, JD Martinez, again, I don't know what he's doing. He's got now a stiff back. So he he's you're looking at a week from Friday at the earliest in L.A. out west. I mean, can, can, come on. Can it be any worse? The, the, could things have started any worse for the Mets? They start out 0-5, 1-6. Then they go to Atlanta. They get a nice win, a nice come-from-behind win. And then last night they fall behind 6-0. The, the, the starting pitching, which was so great in the first week of the season, is now starting to show its face and, and show us what it really is. And it's really what we thought it was, right? They're not very good. They're not very deep. The team's not hitting. You got Lindor who can't hit the water if he jumps out of a boat. And and I'm and listen, I'm not jumping on Lindor because it's early, okay? He struggles, always struggles in April. He has notoriously a bad starter. And he will probably hit to the back of his baseball card because that's what he does, okay? He's a perennial all-star. He's a good ball player. I think he should not switch hit as much. I don't think he could hit from the left side as well anymore. Not that he ever really did. I think he's got to, until he at least breaks out of this funk, just hit from the right side because you're getting most of your bats from the left side because you're facing righties. So, but, you know, listen, there's people smarter than me that are in charge of that. As far as Zenga goes and the Mets, listen, it, it doesn't get any easier either. Okay, they go home for a little bit and then they go right out west. They have two West Coast trips in like the next three weeks. And we all know that the West Coast is where Mets seasons go to die. It usually is in June. It might be a little bit earlier this year. Might be. 
Yankees are trailing now four to one as they head to the eighth inning at the stadium to the, the terrible, terrible Florida Marlins or Miami Marlins as they are now. Uh, Marlins are one and 11. They're looking for their second win of the season. Listen, every, every baseball team gets 60 wins, right? Either way, no matter what, everybody's going to get 60 wins. Everybody's going to get 60 losses. It's what you do with the other games that matters. And you know, the Yankees after a, a red hot start, red hot, everything going right. As, as much as going wrong for the Mets is going right for the Yankees. And I, I know I heard Sal Licata today on WFAN talk about, oh, I don't think the Yankees doesn't look like you're crazy, Sal. You're crazy. And we love Sal. We had him on the show. We love Sal. But come on. We all see the writing on the wall here. This is this looks like a good Yankee team and a Yankee team that's ready to have a big season. And it looks like a Mets team that's just circling the drain. And we're two weeks into it. We're not even in the middle of April yet. So that's what's going on on the baseball front. Last night, you had the Knicks get a win, a big win, okay? They they beat the Bulls. They should beat the Bulls. The Bulls are a bad team. They went in there. They took care of business. Another big night from uh, Brunson, you know, but that's nothing new. Brunson gets 30, 40 every night. He went for, I think, 40-something and eight rebounds last night. DiVincenzo played well. Uh, Hart played well. It's not, a, it's not about this anymore. Now, yes, they have three important games, which they should win all three. The only one questionable would be the Celtics, and I don't think the Celtics are going to play anybody because they really have no motivation to. So, to be honest with you, the Knicks should win all three. They currently are sitting in the third seed. Listen, just stay out of the fifth seed. Just stay four and above. Get yourself home court. Have games one and two at the Garden, and you should be okay in the first round. It's not about what this team does in the regular season now. It's Ken Brunson and Hart and DiVincenzo and OG can they transfer it now into the playoffs where it's a whole nother ball game? It's a lot tougher. It's a lot more physical. It's a lot tighter defense. Everything gets harder in the playoffs. Can this team translate it there? We know that they're not going to go as far as they were going to go without Randall, but can they give us a little run here? You know, maybe, maybe make it to a conference finals. Maybe, maybe not. We're going to talk about that. We got plenty of Knicks coming up with Dexter in just a couple minutes. I wanted to touch on the Islanders and the Rangers. Now, the Islanders, it was a weird game last night, okay? The Islanders were desperate coming into the game. The Rangers don't need the game, okay? They're, they're going for the President's Trophy, which, to be honest with you, I'd rather them not get because it's kind of a kiss of death when you get the President's Trophy. That's besides the point. Islanders came out flying. Shesterkin played well in the first period, and at the end of the first period, it was 3 nothing Islanders. They came out. They played like the desperate team that they were. The Rangers kind of, you know, a little lackadaisical, a little sloppy, took penalties, and then bam, you're, you're down 3 nothing. Okay, it's going to be one of those nights the team could have laid down. Good for the Rangers. They didn't lay down. They came back. They fought back, got a couple power play goals. You got Kreider scoring again, 3-2. And then in the third period, the Islanders played very weird, if you ask me. They played not to lose this game. They kind of hunkered down in their own zone. They said, we are going to be okay with you just with just taking withstanding your barrage. And they did. And that's a tough way to win. They blocked like 35 shots. The Rangers were just peppering Varlamov all night with shots. And then the Rangers now, where the real story comes in is at the end, in the last five minutes, you had Zabanajad get hit coming across the ice. I, I don't even know who it was for the Islanders. They didn't see each other. Neither of them were looking. I don't think it was a dirty hit. I get why Laviolette is upset because Zabanajad is a huge piece. He's a top six forward. He's, he's a, they're not going anywhere without Zabanajad. Hit his head. He went down. I think he's going to be okay. That, I thought it was a clean hit. That's just me, Laviolette. They, they know more about it. They, they think it wasn't. I didn't think there was anything malice, like no malice towards it or anything like that. The other one was in the last seven seconds. Trocek was four feet from the boards. And Dobson came and, and clear, like everyone in the building, everyone that was watching the game saw it was clear as day. A hit from behind, a dirty hit, and a dangerous hit. That's the kind of play, play that would, where someone breaks their neck. You're four feet, five feet from the boards, you get hit, you go down, it gives you enough room to lean in, and you snap your neck on the boards. Nothing was called, the Islanders went down, scored an empty netter, game over, whatever. Trocek was in the referee's face. It was a dirty hit. There was no penalty called. It doesn't matter because the game's really irrelevant to the Rangers, but that was dirty and it was dangerous. 
by Dobson. And I think the league should look at look into it. To be honest, I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't really looked to see if they if they've issued any kind of suspension. I would guess they haven't, especially with the way the Islanders are playing, and, and every game is so huge for them at this point. They played the ways they they now won five in a row. They played their way back into the playoffs. But uh, I completely agree with Laviolette on the second hit. The first one, the, the Zabanajed one, listen, the guy kind of put his shoulder out, but it, 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 it there was nothing dirty about it, okay? That's just, let's let's let that go. Let's just hope Zabanajad's okay. Because like I said, you're not going anywhere without him. You need Zabanajad if you're going to win a cup this year. And that's what the Rangers are going for. They're going to win a President's Trophy. Or they're going to be number one in the Eastern Conference. It's cup or bust this year for this team. And we'll see coming up. So we got the playoffs starting as the regular season winds down in both the NBA and in the NHL. And we got playoffs coming to the world's most famous arena and possibly to uh, Belmont with the Islanders. So we'll see how it goes. Let's now get to our interview. Our guest, uh, Dexter Henry. Listen, you're going to love it. He gave us some 45 solid minutes. It's it's perfect. We thank him for coming on. Enjoy it, everybody. We'll see you on the other side, and we'll tell you what's going on this weekend. All right, so now it's time for our guest. We would like to welcome in. He uh, works for New York Post and SMY Digital Vehicles. He's the host of New York Got Game. He does 2020 updates on The Flash. We'll be doing them tomorrow. And you can also hear him on CBS Sports Radio. And he started his own broadcasting company, Backpack Broadcasting. His name is Dexter Henry. Dexter, what's up, man? Thanks for giving us a couple minutes. What's up, Bob? I'm so glad to be here with you. I love what you're doing with the podcast. Thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, let, let, let's let, tell everybody a little bit about yourself first. For, for people who don't know you, I, did, I, had, I just said I, I, haven't, I didn't know you were working on the fan. Tell, tell little people, people about yourself. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Brooklyn born and raised. I'm a, I'm a Brooklyn guy uh, from East Flatbush, Brooklyn. Also uh, lived in Old Mill Basin area for a while. Still still a Brooklyn Knight. Um, loved sports from the time I was young. Always kind of knew I wanted to get into sports storytelling. I went to the University of Pittsburgh where I studied uh, broadcast journalism, media communications. Uh, and then, you know, I've had a, a blessed career in sports journalism. I've been doing this almost 19 years. Uh, it's been a long journey. Uh, as you said, I currently work with New York Post SNY for their digital partnership as, as a sports anchor for them. Uh, also do update anchors for update anchoring, excuse me, for WFAN and CBS Sports. But I've had a long journey. I've worked for some great places like the News 12 networks. Uh, I also stepped out of sports for a little bit. I worked for AccuWeather for a while. I was working as a weather reporter. Um, I used to cover the Brooklyn Nets for Nets Daily. Worked at St. Francis College as a new media coordinator. And uh, you mentioned the thing that I really felt uh, – helped my career a ton was starting my own media outlet backpack broadcasting and creating a lot of my own content and doing a lot of my own reporting because that's how news 12 found me and my boss Pat o, former boss Pat O'Keefe who's been a guest on this show uh hired me there uh who's who's a great dude and I, I owe a lot of my career to him so yeah that's a little about me but I, I, I love sports I grew up a Mets fan grew up a Knicks fan Rangers no, that's a rough was, that's rough Knicks and Mets rough. during those years <laughs> I mean that's rough <laughs> It was rough, man. Uh, I was a Jets fan, but I told you, Bob, I left that life alone. I now root for the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah big, Did big, you root big for fan. Pittsburgh when they when they beat when the Jets beat them? In the chair in the well, I mean well, I'm sorry, when Pittsburgh beat yeah. them. No, when the Jets no, beat them. I was, no, 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 no. It's no, it's funny. I was still a Jets fan then, actually. I was actually still a Jets fan. That's that when time. you were like, forget it, forget it. I'm out. No, you, know, you know, you know what I said, forget it, when they drafted Zach Wilson. That's when I knew. I knew I said, I'm done with this team. Uh, I didn't think Zach Wilson was going to be good. I was right. Um, I, I was done with the team then. They just have never had a franchise quarterback, and I, I didn't know. It. The only team I left, that, those are my teams. I'm a big – also, I love soccer. I'm a big Liverpool soccer fan. So Okay. I, oh, I, I have a I, buddy I was, who's was, a big Liverpool soccer fan. I have a buddy who's yeah, a big, big Liverpool. Liverpool fan. Yeah, big Liverpool fan. So those are my teams. I mean, I love sports. I love talking sports like Bob does here. And so – Anytime somebody says, hey, Dex, come on, let's talk some sports, I'm, I'm with it. I'm fine. That's, good. that's right. That's right. This is this big break. After the, this is his next big break right here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I like it. Now, um, now, now, last night, the Knicks, let's, let's start with the Knicks. You're a big Knicks yeah. fan. Let's start with the Knicks, okay? Last night, a big win over um, the Bulls. 128-117 was the final score. You had Brunson with 48-8. and eight. He's been how, – how far can this team go? With Brunson, because now that they don't have uh, Randall, we know that OG's just coming back. How far can they go with with Brunson in the playoffs? 
So I think one of the good things, Bob, was that OG looked really good last night, probably the best game he had since he came back and then went out again with the elbow injury. But to answer your question, which is funny, it's a question I'd asked this week on my show, New York Got Game. I think this team, the way they're playing, how connected they are, how tough they play for each other, the defense that we're seeing, Bob, I think they could win a round. I don't know if they could win more than that. It really depends on the matchup they would have in the second round. If they get into that two or three spot in the East and they're able to avoid Boston until the conference finals, maybe they could still get to a conference finals. I'd feel better if they had Randall, but I think they could definitely win a round because Jalen Brunson is playing at an MVP level right now. Well, he, I mean, I don't be... know about MVP, but he's an all-NBA player. Oh, he's, he's definitely I mean, all-NBA. Do you think yeah, he should MVP get top five? Top, spot. top five top spot. votes? For... I think he'll get votes. for. He'll get I, votes. Show... I think... Do I think he'll finish in the top five of MVP voting? Yes. He's a definite All NBA player, likely to be second team All NBA, which is which top ten. People, you know, 10. don't frown on on second team All NBA. That's top ten player. Right. That's not. You know, you you actually somebody texted me today and said, "Oh, is it sort of disrespectful that people are only talking about Jalen Brunson as All NBA?" And I'm like, "No, that means you're a top <laughs> ten player. That's yeah, yeah, really good. There's no shame in being an All NBA player, even if you're third team, right? Like you're a top fifteen player in this league. There's no shame in that. So. I, I think he'll. it wouldn't shock me if you saw him get fifth-place votes or sixth-place votes if he finished in that range for MVP. I think he's, you know, your MVPs, I say right now, Jokic, SGA, Luka, Giannis, I think they're clearly ahead of him. He and Tatum are kind of going to be, I think, battling there for fifth or sixth, I think you could see in, in the voting. But, look, he's playing MVP-like, I'll say that, MVP caliber, That's right? Fair. That's you, a fair point. You take him off this team. Are they anywhere near the forty-seven wins? I'm talking about without him and Randall, obviously. No, no, no. no. Not. Now, do you think? Do you think that maybe just a? Uh, is this just a like? Because we're so used to losing teams with the Knicks at this point mm -hmm. that are they really just? When you look at the big picture, are they just a fun team that's going to get into the playoffs? Like you said, win a round. Because people are the expectations were kind of high. You know, people thought that maybe a, a, a conference championship. I heard NBA final. They're just a fun team. They're not ready for the playoff. This isn't a playoff team, I don't think. I think this, if you're asking Bob, as they're currently constructed without Randall being here, I think that, yeah, it's a fun team for this year. I do think the expectations when pe some people were going too far with NBA Finals. I wasn't going to go there. The way they were playing in January. When I do think that version of the team could have made a conference finals. That I believe. I think that version of the team could have. We done only it, saw I that think version for like two weeks. I know. They, 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 like, yeah, three, three and a half weeks, maybe. Right, that we saw. But they were playing so good. The defense was so good. They were locked in. Everything looked like it was moving well. Do you? If your point is, do we need to see more? Absolutely. I think the Knicks have the foundation of a good team that can, with some more tweaking can definitely be in that contender status. But I like where they are right now as a team. Do I this version of the team heading into the playoffs, do I think they can do I think they can go deep? No, I don't think so. But I think if they get that version of the team they had earlier and they make some tweaks to that, which I think they will, yeah, I think this is a team that can contend. I like the culture of this team and I think they're they play winning basketball. And they and play I think defense. That'll, that'll Thibodeau well. has them playing defense, right? He may leave his guys in too long. Like, well, what about that game when he left Brunson in against the Celtics? I think 10 seconds yeah. left. He rolls his – I mean, come on. I was ready to be like, you know, he wanted to wring his neck there. Did Now, if you look at the – at the, uh, I have it right here. At the playoff picture mm -hmm. right now, they, it, the East is so jammed up, they could finish – they're only a game out of the, the two spot, but they're also only two games out of the seven spot. Now, if you look at Balt – uh, Baltimore um, – Milwaukee plays Orlando twice now in these final three games. The Knicks games are mm -hmm. at Boston versus the Nets and again and versus the Bulls at home. Two of, they could win all three of those games because Boston's probably not going to play many. What do, you, what do you think? Do you think they would be better off? I know they have to finish in that top four because you don't want to go on the road right off the bat. Where do you think they finish uh, next, you know, when we start next week? My gut says they finish third. I, th I think they finish third, Bob. I think they, I think they have to. Their mindset has to be win out, win these three games, take care of your business. Boston on Thursday night, as you mentioned, probably is resting a bunch of players. We saw them rest KP. We saw them rest Harford last night against the Bucks. 
you should beat this Nets team. You should beat this Bulls team again at home, even though you dropped one to them last Friday. Win out. You get to 50 wins. I think if they do that, that at least has them fit. If they do win out, pretty much they take care of their business. The worst they can finish is third. If they take care of business, the worst they can finish is third. If if Milwaukee slips up a little bit, and we'll see with Giannis and his injury, how that affects things, they could get second. Now, what we have to remember is they're a game back in Milwaukee now, but they're really two games back in Milwaukee because Milwaukee has a tiebreaker. So you got to win out to take care of business. If you win out, that's fine. I'm with you. You don't want to start on the road. I don't think the Knicks will finish worse than fourth, but they have to take care of business, and that means winning out. And I think they want to make a statement in Boston. I have a feeling the Knicks are going to play really good in Boston. I'm going to go out and say this. I think the Knicks win out. I think the Knicks get to, they get to 50 wins, which is big for them this year, especially with everything that's gone on with the team, with injury wise. And I think they finish. I think they'll finish third. I think they may end up finishing tied with Milwaukee with the same record, but Milwaukee beats them on the tiebreaker and they end up with a three spot. And we'll see who they place. Now I think. They could play Indiana right now, but who knows if Philly moves up to that sixth spot, they're still alive for it. It's so tight. And the West so is tight, the same man. way. The West is the same way. You might end up with a with a Golden State Lakers playing yeah. game situation right there. I mean, that that that's a great game right there. What Absolutely. Th- what are your thoughts on LeBron? And and are you a Jordan guy or Le- first of all, are you a Jordan or LeBron guy? Yeah, growing up as as a Knicks fan. I hated Jordan the, 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 all, all the time. So somebody might hear that and say, oh, Dexter, well, you're going to be a LeBron guy. No, I think I think Jordan is the best player I've ever seen, okay. uh, hands down. Now, if somebody wants to say LeBron, it doesn't make me mad. I think LeBron is absolutely in the top three. I have him number two. It's going to be Jordan, LeBron, Kareem for me uh, that's going to go. But in terms of what I've seen, I'd say Jordan is the best. LeBron is amazing. You know, I'm going to go Jordan over LeBron. LeBron's amazing. That's not taking anything away from him. LeBron's got the longevity. Yeah, LeBron. The eight Jordan was, uh, the was, was 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 you know sitting right in the bench for the for the Wizards at this point in his career. Yeah, the what LeBron is doing at this age is amazing, Bob. Like amazing. Like the fact that he's still playing at such a high level. Can he do what he did five years ago? No, but he's still amazing. We've never seen anybody play like this at 39. Which is and why you should be a Le- there. You go. You just said it. Which is why you should be a Le- LeBron guy. Yeah. Well, well, you know what the thing is. You can respect both things oh, right exactly. like, absolutely and and I, and I and I do I, I always feel like that debate gets people take too if somebody tells me they think LeBron's a go yeah, I don't yeah. have a problem with it, it but they me. think you're saying Jordan stinks like, right I'm not saying it's not you. the like, case. Hey, listen, you're number right. two all time Forget right. it. I'm not telling you Jordan stinks no nah. I have a, a Hall of Fame I'm a very uh, high level high grade or hard to get into the Baseball Hall of Fame and when yeah. I argue with people about players, they think they're acting like I'm talking about this player stinks. I'm like, no, no, no. He's not a Hall of Famer. It doesn't just mean have he stinks. Standard. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't want to just put anybody in there. Right. So. It's, it's, some, it's some, sometimes, sometimes I've, I've had this discussion with Bob. I'm sure you've had too. I've had this discussion with Yankee fans who sometimes want to get certain players, their number retired, or they want to put them in Monument Park. And They've I'm like, watered eh. that down. Yeah. It, I, I agree with you. I think it has been watered down. I agree. And there has to be a standard. There's some really dope players that have played for the Yankees, but they're not Hall of Famers, right? And the standard, I felt like for a long time for the Yankees to get your number retired or to be in Monument Park was you got to be a great Yankee and a Hall of Famer. You got to be one of the best players at your position and the time that you play. Yeah, like Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill, okay, don't put him in Monument Park. I'm with you. Because he's not with Babe Ruth and Jeter and Mariano. Like, come on. Let's be real here. And if you want to have enough. Go ahead. You want to have another place for those guys? I'm fine with that. But to have a plaque or a number retired, no, you're not in that class. And that's and that's fine. It's fine. We there's levels to this stuff, right? Like it's okay. It's okay to have levels to things. Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And like even with the Mets fans, people argue. I was arguing on, online just the other day about David Wright. Oh, we belong. I go, David Wright is not a Hall of Famer. You can't put him in the Hall of Fame. I get it, and they're like, "Well, if he didn't get," I go, "If he didn't get hurt, but he did get hurt, you know, he, he, you can't because then you could say that about anybody. Then Strawberry and Good and 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 Degrom and all them should be put in too." So, so you, let me you ask you. Let, 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 oh yeah, well, you're just talking about Baseball Hall of Fame, and I, correct, and I agree correct. with you on that. But you you have no. I just want to ask you a question. You don't have a prop. Do you think David Wright's number should be retired by the Mets? I do, I do, and I think okay. it will be. I think he's next. I think he's kind of taking care of the '86 guys right now mm-hmm. with Keith last year, and he's got Gooden and Strawberry going in this year. And then I think David Wright's the the, the next one 
the logical one. The only other person I could even think that maybe would be like a John Franco, but I don't think he deserves it. Nah, I don't. I, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fine with Wright. I think Wright should go in. Absolutely. I love that. I love that they're doing Strawberry and Gooden. I, I mean, I'm a little biased. Those are my guys growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Well, those are our guys. Reason, yeah, eighty six. They're 80, the reason yeah. I'm a Mets fan. They're the reason I'm a Mets fan, big time. And um, yeah, Wright, I don't have a problem with. But like you were talking, I just was being clear on that. You were talking about Baseball Hall of Fame, which yeah, I also I, I, that that went right. because you know what? Because the NFL puts everybody in. The NFL right. has to have a certain amount each year. Yeah, you know, anybody gets into the NFL Hall of Fame. And then basketball is basketball is a little different because it's a it's a it's a just a basketball Hall of Fame. You got college, you got everything. You know, right. it's just the the National Basketball Hall of Fame. So it's a little different. Ba- and baseball seems to be the the one, you know, that that's. That was held in the highest standard, which not anymore because right. now they got a whole generation of people not in there. You know, they got they, our generation, the best players of our generation are not in there. Now, whether you think which they I, should be or not, you got Bonds, you got A Rod, you got Clemens, none of them are in there. And you I got the problem. whole Hall of Fame, uh, the all time home run leader, the, the all these people not even in the Hall of Fame. So the. the which I, which I have a get. problem with. I, I, have a, no, I have a problem with that because I think, I think museums, right? I think. Hall of Fames are supposed to tell the history of the sport, right? Like it's supposed good and bad. You don't get to just take away the bad parts you want out of history conveniently, right? Absolutely. And so no matter how no matter how you feel about the steroid stuff, we have to acknowledge that era as it existed and even the great players that existed in that era. And, and so, you know, for me, I'll I'll say my piece on it. It's like, yeah, I think Barry Bond should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I do think he should be in the Hall of Fame. He would have um, been. He would have been in the Hall of Fame either way. Which steroids that's without? My, that's there my There are certain point. guys that are like that. A Rod, Clemens, Bonds. Well, come on, he had seven hundred something home runs. They were going to be in there either way. No and matter you how you feel about guys steroids, in there. you already got steroid yeah. guys in there. Right. So you might as well let everybody in there. That's my. But but you know what you could do? You could put an asterisk next to them. You could tell the truth about what happened. And so when you you know parents bring their kids or you know fathers bring their sons or daughters and they want to talk about it, they can say, hey, this is what happened in this era. We could talk about it and have a conversation this yeah, is what it, we did it, make the whole thing ridiculous today. because they were all on it they were all on it like but you know everybody and 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 the generation before us they were all doing the greenies and the, greenies. the uppers and stuff you know and they, yeah. so it's it is what it is you know they would do, they're using i'm drugs. with you i'm with so, you i'd use yeah. drugs too if i had to if it would get me all that money you know clemens and bonds look pretty healthy they look healthier than me Right, I'm yeah. not going to be holier than I'm not going to be holier than down and say what I would or wouldn't do in that position to to keep that money train going, right? Yeah, Can't yeah listen, the whole we could talk an hour about that. But now, <laughs> um, how how did you how did your brackets look? Did you have UConn? Did you did you not have UConn? I had UConn, so my brackets were good. Except I finished I, I finished in my work pool. I finished first. Uh, we just had a little friendly one going there. Uh, I had a couple others. I finished fourth and seventh. So, okay. I've never yeah. won a bracket pool. Never in my life. Never have won one. I've really? won every year okay. since like seventh grade. I've never won one. Never. Is All right, you do. You're due. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, tell that about the Mets, too, you know. Um, <laughs> this team, this UConn team, where does it rank? Is it one of the best all time? I mean, I think you got to. I think anytime you win back-to-back is hard. I think winning back-to-back in this era of college basketball is hard, too. That's something that shouldn't be under, underrated. So they got to be looked at the best as one of all time. When you're talking about NIL, you know, you're not seeing college teams stick together as long. And it's been like that for a while. But I think even more in this NIL transfer portal world. So what what Hurley has done there has been amazing. Uh, just just absolutely amazing. They're great. I mean, you look, the last team that won back-to-back was Florida. Uh, you know, that They're was better than Florida. Like, I think the team is better than Florida. I think they're more talented and proven. And Florida had Joakim Noah on that team. You had Corey Brewer um, on, on that team. There were some good NBA players on that team. But this team, how they dominated, that that's the thing for me, Bob. How they just rolled through these last 12 games of the tournament that they played. I mean, just destroying opponents. And whenever it was close, it wasn't. You know, my, my colleague Zach Brazilla was saying this. He's like, look, anytime they got a – you think the game was close. UConn had the ability to just psh, go out on this run, and then the game was over. We saw this the other night in the national championship game against Purdue. You know, a six-point game at the half, and then UConn comes out in the second half. They handle business. Next thing you know, it's double digits, and they're cruising. They're just so good defensively. Klingon's fantastic defensively. Um, even though Edie got his points, and I thought that's what Zach Rosilla told me when I interviewed him. Look, they Edie's let him get, get his points. points. Right, and that was a smart game plan. Who was going to kill you on that Purdue team? You didn't trust their guards. I didn't trust their guards to guard UConn's guards on the perimeter. And then 
Look at the, look at that. And that stat you got there. Twelve straight NCAA 12 straight tournament games by, by ten, 10 points. points. And they would they led by in, in all but one game, all but the national semifinal against Arkansas. They led by thirty points in one of them. In a, in an elite eight against the number three team in the region, they went on a thirty nothing run. I've never yeah. seen a thirty nothing run. Anybody? Yeah, it's it's one of the it's one of the most dominant things that we've seen like for you know you're not going to see this a lot often i think we need to appreciate it too you're not going to see a lot of two-time champions and look it'd been a long time since it had happened right a very long time since we saw that they may you know, be almost, the most dominant since ucla right with with lou alcinder and, and or kareem abdul jabbar right and the thing with that is right you, you're never going to see that again right no, you're never like gonna 10 see in a row they won like 10 in a row right. with walton and then kareem imagine that kareem into uh walton into kareem that's crazy. Hall of Famer to a hall, to a hall of Famer to a top three player of all time all in time. basketball, right? <laughs> right, right, that, right. That's that's insane, right? And 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 you you went from a a Hall of Fame. Pill people don't realize how good Bill Walton was, even in his heyday in college. Bill Walton was amazing, right? Like Bill Walton was tremendous, and then you go to definitely the Kareem. greatest player of his generation. They didn't let you dunk. They didn't let right. you dunk after his freshman year because he was just killing him too much. Yeah, Kareem, if you don't, for the kids out there, listen, if you don't know anything about Kareem, go look up some Kareem, go look up some Bill Walton, too. And Bill Walton, a lot of injuries, but Bill Walton was a bad man. Like, nah, don't 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 get that twisted. And he did so, it all smoking pot, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> High times for Bill Walton. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> also one of my favorite color, color commentators of all time. Bill Walton, so. yeah. Well, he because he, you never know what you're going to get from him. He, oh, that, love, it, could go, it could go south real fast, yo. It could. It could, but that's the ride with Bill Walton, right? And so <laughs> I, I, I love it with him, Bob. And, and listen, this, this UConn team, you got to – in the context of today, like I'm saying, you you have to give them the proper respect, and this this is something you probably may not see done for another couple of years. You know, to to when you have the turnover, you instill what you have in the program that Hurley's done. Hurley's got a great thing up there. I mean, we even have to think about UConn as just a program, right? This is their sixth national that, title. That's yeah, sixth. With people this, talking about them leaving for Kentucky, I'm like, what are you crazy? UConn is such a better program right now than Kentucky. I think that he they would have to throw. I get why Kentucky wants her. Everybody has a price. Every, that is true. I say this all the time. Everybody's got a price. They're gonna have to throw a boatload of cash for him. You know, you heard Hurley talk about his wife doesn't want to move again, and we all know that if impacts things as family. But he's got a good thing at UConn. He's a Northeast guy. He's here in the Northeast at UConn. UConn is now back to winning championships. They won six. He's, he's done Calhoun with Calhoun. Started. You never yeah. think you see another Calhounian. He's done it, and he's and he's younger. He's going to yeah. surpass Calhoun. So why why would he not think he's it's legacy? He's the Big East has not gotten the respect it deserves in terms of being one of the best uh, conferences in the country, and he's leading the way there. I I don't see why he would leave. I know what he. I definitely know what he's telling UConn though, Bob. Yesterday's price is not today's oh, yeah, price. Yeah, yeah. He's only and making that three price million. Is going up. Yeah, yeah. That but you got better pay. Up. And but but the problem is with with Kentucky is they got the Purdue chicken family there, and they can pay whatever he wants. What you, they could they could go to him and say, "What's your price?" Oh no, no, I'm sorry. The Purdue chicken family is in Arkansas, right? That, Arkansas. that took. Arkansas. You're right. You're right. But Kentucky has the boosters. They have the money to say whatever you want. We can get it for you. They have more money than UConn. UConn's a smaller school. Yeah, they got money, and we'll see if the we'll see if the money talks in this situation. You got to go live in Let, Lexington. Let's... Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'd rather. I'd probably rather. Me personally, I'd rather live in stores. Yeah, but <laughs> that's just that's just my vibe and my get down. But listen, they throw you a lot of money to be in Lexington. It's a it's a blue blood, and Kentucky is going to go swing big. They're going to go for. They want a big name. This is Kentucky basketball. They're, they're not the going for. They're, yeah, they're going for a big name. They're not going for. Uh, you know what's what's going on there now, and we'll see what happens with with the staff from Kentucky going to Arkansas. I was talking to somebody yesterday who I know that knows somebody that was on Calipari staff that I actually know uh, a little bit too, and uh, we don't know what's happening if those guys are going to Arkansas. So it'll be interesting to see what goes on with that. Yeah, Calipari's got more money than he could than he could deal with anyway. So he, you know, and, he, and, he, and he's got, getting more now. So, yep. but and I think UConn is a blue blood, by the way. I think for the, over the last 25 years, they, they've been the dominant force. Them and Villanova, because they've done a great job with this Big East. They, they, this Big yeah. East was falling apart, and they rebuilt it as a basketball uh, conference, and they've done a fantastic job. You have to, you know what? That's a great point, because you have to credit what Hurley has done. Even Kevin Ollie before him, and then Jay Wright has done. you got to credit it. I think that 
people want to say with blue bloods that it has to be the origin of the teams that were before but it's like no that list is always going to expand or grow and i think now you have to talk about uconn being in that realm not just because they've been a good program because they've won right like they've won they've six won titles, titles in 25 six years titles. yeah six titles in 25 years you're at that level now we've seen what villanova has 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 done had done as well too so I think you have to start looking at those programs differently. Now, Villanova has not been the same level since Jay Wright, and we'll see if they get it. With UConn, the thing is we've seen it with three different coaches, right? We've yes, seen yes. we've seen them do it now. Because Kevin Ollie was coaches. good too. He just kind of they, yeah. you know, they, they, you know, there was something that you know happened, whatever. He he got forced out, but Kevin Ollie was a good coach. Kevin Ollie was good coach, and and he had got them to that to that pinnacle too. So we've seen what Calhoun's done. You've seen what Ollie did. You see what Hurley's done. It it's it's hard not, six and twenty five years as a program. You got to think about what UConn was before that. That's the key, folks. They would know, but got to know, right? And six and twenty five years is amazing. Any college would sign for that. I wish my Pitt Panthers could do that. Six yeah, and twenty five. I said, I said I his Pitt Panthers. Your Pitt <laughs> Panthers. Every I can see it now. My but reason. One of the reasons why I've never won in one of those bracket pools is the damn Pitt Panthers. It was, it was us. It was pit, us. Pit, we were pit, killing pit, you. Pit, pit. <laughs> I'm putting X's through it because I did it back before there was computers. We used to have everybody right. sheets and we'd have to go Sheets. through. And you know, Kat, and I've been just crossing off Pitt, 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 Pitt. I'm like, oh damn it, Pittsburgh again. But anyway, now it's let's hard, get to man. let's get to our Mets. You're a Mets fan. I'm a Mets fan. You know, mm-hmm. listen, I, you gave up the Jets. I, I I don't like that. But but and either way, <laughs> I can respect it. I can respect. It. You didn't give up the Mets. I don't, why would you give up the Jets and not the Mets? Because the Mets. Because here's the reason. I, people ask me this question a lot. The reason is, at least as a Mets fan, I can point to they've been to two World Series. The highs have been really good with the Mets, the runs. 2015 was a fantastic run as a Mets fan. 2006, despite how it ended, was a fantastic run. I've seen the Mets be competent. I've seen consistent incompetence from the Jets. The Jets back may be the best day, uh, blood championship, AFC championship I was covering the team around then. It was good, and I loved those Rex Ryan teams, and that was a high. And then you go to 98, you know, when they get to the <laughs> AFC championship game, and then the next year it all fell apart with Vinny tears his Achilles, right? I, I – I, I see all that, but then it's the years of incompetence after the drafting of Zach Wilson. The Jets haven't made the playoffs for what? What is it? 12, 13 straight years? They haven't they haven't reached the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think it's thirteen I, straight. It's the, it's the longest it, in professional sports. Yeah, it's it, the the management has just been poor. Where the Mets? It's funny if you're a Mets fan. I, I think I think you have to like where the management is right now. I think you like the ownership with Cohen. I think I, I like Stearns. I think he's. I think Stearns understands value. So to the question I know you're going to ask, am I concerned about the Mets' slow yes. start? No, because I thought this team, and I think, Bob, this depends on what you thought the team was going to be. I thought this team this year, even after we got the news about Senga, I said, ah, okay, I can see this anywhere from 79 to 83 wins. I could see yeah, about that. that. About that, right? Um, but we were told was, they could be the Arizona Diamondbacks. Which still isn't crazy. I mean, you're there's right, a lot of right. baseball to go. There, there, what, the Mets are three. What are the Mets are three, four, four and seven? Four and four and seven, three, seven, three, three, uh, three and seven, right? They won. They won two. They won one against the Braves, and they won right. the two in a row. Two, two against Cincy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, one at okay. home. You're right. Four, four and seven. Four and seven. The four and seven. I here's what I'm concerned. This is what's been more shocking to me. The pitching has been a little bit better. The starting pitch has been better than I thought it would be. I thought the starting pitching would struggle a lot more than it's it has. It's going to struggle. It's already starting to. You saw it yesterday. They gave it, they gave it a big run. Severino was a one-inning pitcher. Severino so terrible. I can't terrible. believe that. I can't believe that. I was so terrible. angry when they picked him up. I, was sat, I sat on this show last year, and I said, how do they keep running this guy out every five days? And then they even tried the crazy thing where they were like, let's just throw a starter out there because it's the first inning. They threw a starter out there. They put him in, in the second. He gave him six runs. And then the, he, as soon as he's on the market, the Mets grab him. He's he's been terrible. I mean, when you look at and you look at the fight from the team the last couple of games, the offense is starting to wake up. The team has fought back. He kills them. You know, they get this to six five. They six five. They lose. The offense has shown life the last couple of games. I don't get. I don't. I never get that concerned about early offense struggles, especially with teams in the it's northeast. It's cold in the northeast. Yeah. I never get that. You can't. You can't do too much. You got to let this stuff play out. Um, the pitching was always my concern coming to the season. You're right. It's looked a little bit better outside of Severino than I thought. Manaya didn't look pretty good in his last start. Um, you know, they, they haven't looked good. This is not a really good pitching rotation. They they li- they literally need two of these guys, whether it's Quintana, Manaya. 
you were hoping for Severino, but now I'm sure fans are like, we can't even trust this guy. Yeah, you, you, can't, trust you can't trust him right he's now. He's tipping his pitches. He's got to be because he was so good those two years. His confidence looks shot, man. He looks shot. Confidence is shot. And when someone pitch, pitching like anything, I don't care anything in life, you need confidence in what you do, right? Exactly. If you're not if you're not approaching your job with confidence, you're not going to perform. You approach a, a woman a at the bar and you're shaking. You're not getting a number. You're not getting a number. She'll not let you buy the not, drink, but you're not getting a number. Yeah, she'll take the drink from you. But you're, not, <laughs> you're not you're not getting a number. You might not seal the deal. She's going to read right through that, right? Absolutely. How how you approach the confidence matters, and he doesn't he doesn't look that way. So am I concerned? No, because look, I said I said this team could. I said 79 wins. That's four games below 500, right? They're four games below 500 right now. Yeah. Do I think they could? I think they're going to middle around 500. I think they'll play good. I also wouldn't get to the Braves are a really good team. They're oh, the forget about team the division. In the forget about it. The Braves and the Phillies are both way better. The Mets are 20 games behind the Braves. If you're a Mets fan, you oh, have to please. ask yourself: Are you fine if this team is hovering around 500 in their contention for that last wild card spot? I think that's more than fair for this year. I think this team could do it, and I think at the high end. Maybe they could be the Diamondbacks. Maybe they get hot down the stretch. Maybe they get to about 85 wins. They find their way in. It's not crazy for this Mets team. Now, if that's going to happen, they're going to need three of these pitchers to pitch solid to well. You need Senga to come back, who I think was a fantastic signing by the Mets. You need Senga to come back and pitch well. If Senga can come back and pitch well, I start feeling a little bit differently about this team. And, and then J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez come. That's going to help too. But see, I'm never been. I'm not worried about the offense. What you should like if you're a Mets fan is. Beatty's look like a good player. Beatty looks like he, he was a bad start. He's looked better this year. You're right. He's looked yep. better. He looks like he can hit a little bit. He's fielding better. Field that is, is, better. A, is a bright spot. That is a bright spot. Uh, Francisco Alvarez, who I always was high on as a player. You know, he's had a little bit of a slump the last couple of games, but I think he's, nah, he's good. He's, better. he's good. I, if I'm a Mets, I think the Mets fan, it never was really about this year. I think this is a transition year. And you just, I think my, my goals as, as a, looking at the team was like, can the team be competitive? Can you maybe find another pitcher, whether it's a Manaya, a Quintana, somebody else that can step up and help Senga as you try to rebuild this rotation? And do some of the young guys play? Does Alvarez take a leap? Does Beatty take a leap? And the last thing for me was, do you have a prospect or two that comes up middle to late in the season that starts helping this team and impacts winning? They got a, they got a on those load things? of prospects down there from, from last year's trade deadline. And they're, they're, they're right. big names, too. Acuna. Right. And if and if the team is out of it in August and you sell off some pieces and you're still trying to rebuild the farm system, I don't think it's a bad year as a Mets fan. It never was about this year. They I think it's about Pete though, right? They got to sign Pete. I think they do. If they don't, I also don't think it's the end of the world. I, I, yeah, I, but but why why play hardball with him when you were throwing money around all over the place last year to these old aging guys? You got a guy who's going to hit four or five hundred home runs. Let him do it at first base for the Mets, right? Because he's going to go somewhere else and he's going to do it, and we're going to all be scratching our heads and pissed off because he did it somewhere else. What I'm the thing this is not that it's not that I wouldn't resign him. I'm not that person. But what I wonder, Bob, how does Stearns look at him? Does Stearns view him in the way the previous regime did, right? And I wonder if Stearns would rather have a first baseman who hits for a bit higher average. Because that's my thing with Pete. If it's not Pete's never going to be a 280, 290 hitter. There's, nobody's Could, a 280 hitter anymore. I There's know. very few of them. There's like 20 guys who hit 280. It's crazy. Could you give me 260? Okay. That I'd like. Could you give me 255, 260? That I'd like to see from him, right? Like, could he could he do that? I think, but here's the thing. To you said hardball. You don't want to play hardball with Boris, right? And I, I just wonder what the price is, what the market is for Pete. Um, I think there'll be a lot of, there'll be a lot of that. All those guys go to free agency, Boris. You know, so yes, it's 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 a wrap. There's no there's no extension. There's no deal coming this season. No, I mean, no, very I agree. That because that's not how Boris operates, right? He wants you to go to free agency. He wants you to test the market. Now, how they approach it, Bob? Are they going to go and tell Pete, "Hey, go find the best contract you can on the market and come back to us"? It could be a dangerous game for the Mets to play if Pete doesn't feel the love. But I, I, I think it really matters how he does this season and how Stearns looks at him, which I have no idea. I think they like Pete. I think they'd like to see him hit for a little bit higher of an average. Pete's a good leader. He's going to give the, you 40 the, home runs. The, the, he gives you the home runs. The guys in the clubhouse love him. There's no doubt about that. 
And I think Mets fans, you know, they want to see, they haven't seen this in a long time, a homegrown guy stick with the team. You know, would have happened with Wright, but he got hurt. I would have loved Reyes, who was my guy. I would have loved I to love seen Reyes. that happen. I, love, I tell you, still yeah. to this day, there's nothing more exciting than watching Reyes live, being at the oh, game, man. watching Reyes hit a triple. Man, that was that 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 those were great times. So what in 06 watching Reyes fly around those bases oh, and steal great. those bases. So fast. So man, fast. it was great. I, I, I love that. I actually that's a part of the game I missed, the speedsters and more of the stolen bases, even though we're starting to see the it's stolen coming bases back. go up a little bit. That I like. I love. I think one of the most exciting parts of the game is the speedster once he gets on and what he can make happen. Or, or manufacture a run. Like, look at the game, uh, the the doubleheader they played, where Batty couldn't get a bunt down. I mean, right. like, like, come on. I get. It. Listen, I get it. And they they're not taught it, and they should. They don't know how to bunt, so they don't have a bunt. But just can you can you teach these guys how to bunt? I I think I, I don't. I'm I'm always about games evolve and sports evolve, and I'm always fine with that. But I do think there has to be balance, and I think something with baseball that take out the, the I like the game is sped up a little bit more I actually do love that but I thought one of the things I really want to come back like you said a little bit more fundamentals the manufacturing runs uh work working good at bats you know making sure the pitcher is getting high pitch counts you actually seeing the Yankees do that this year and and, and do a lot of that yeah of course when you get on base be, when you get on yeah when you get on base be a little aggressive right uh, can you can you steal? Can you get that guy to second? I like seeing those parts instead of always going for yeah. the homer. Hit and run, and, go from first to third on a base hit. You yeah. know, like, dude, come on, just regular stuff. And now the Mets, the thing with the Mets is they always embarrass themselves. So one way or another, right? This year, I'll tell you exactly what the bar- embarrassing moment's going to be. We're going to be Let twenty games behind the Braves in August. We're going to be almost out of it, teetering on out of it. Diaz is going to be coming into a game and they're going to shut the lights off. It's going to be the light show of the century. And people are going to be laughing at us because it's the 20 games out and they, they were doing that. It was electric when they were a good team. Two years ago, that was electric. The, the trumpets, right. Timmy trumpets, whatnot. Now, do you do that 20 games out in, in August? People are going to be laughing at you. It's going to be like when they practiced winning the World Series a couple years ago. Yeah, I, I hadn't even thought about that. It, it, I, haven't even thought, I hadn't really thought about that. I'm like, it's probably not the best look. Because you, your out. boy's over at SNY and I gave Colin Cosell, who's the... the the uh, uh, PA announcer, a hard time about this too. They they, they think it's like a, the, the Academy Awards, black and white into color. And like, can we just go to commercial and just come back and then and continue with the game? I I think that I'll say this. This this has to do with sports production on TV, presentation of the games. I think that. Some there are gonna be a lot of people like you who's just like, man, just keep it to the game. Let's just <laughs> let's 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 just let's just get to the game. And some people, maybe younger people, and maybe I'm just being old on this, some people care more about that presentation, the excitement. I personally don't think this is just me personally. The lights don't do much for me. It's nice, it's cool, I guess. It doesn't I think atmosphere at games, you have to have good presentation. I don't want to say that doesn't matter. I want to be very fair. clear. And there's a lot of people that work for the Mets, the Knicks, the Rangers that do amazing jobs at game presentation. I don't think you want to be too stuffy with it, but I don't think you want to be too over the top with it. I think there's a nice place in the middle that you can meet with it. And I, But what I want to say is the energy that matters at games is brought by the fans. And yes, the, the team has to bring it too in their presentation. But when those trumpets were playing and Diaz was coming to, out two seasons ago and the fans are going crazy, right? It was dope. It was amazing. Yes. But you know what matters with all that? You know why it was great? Because they were winning, right? <laughs> when they're not winning, nobody's going to care that much. We've all been to Shea. We've been to City Field. We've been to whatever stadium you want to mention when the team's not winning. And one of the things I love about being a New Yorker and supporting the New York teams is that if you're not good, we're going to let you know about it. We're not going to show up. We're not going to spend our money when you're not invested in the team or giving the requisite energy. So, that that I'm fine with, but at the end of the day, you can have all the lights you want. You can have all the bells and whistles you want, and that and that's fine and that's cool. But you got to win. You got to put a good product on the field. And I, the, the Mets fans are smart enough to know. Twenty games out, ain't nobody gonna care about those lights, Bob. <laughs> ain't nobody care about those whole thing. Lights. I did a whole thing, and you, you go check it out on my TikTok or whatever. I did a whole thing about how when they lost twenty-one to three to the Braves. Mm-hmm. That was a split admission doubleheader. Could you imagine yep. being the, one of the guys that walked out of there, 21-3, turned around, paid, and went back in? And there were people who did that. And I was like, what, what are you yeah. doing? 21-3? Yeah, I, I, 
the best to me, the, I always say this, you know, and I remember Joe Beningo, you say this all the time as a, on, on the fan. The best thing you can do as a consumer, if you don't like the product that's out on the field, you don't have to show up. You know, you don't yeah, have to show right. up. You know, it, it, it the, the people that work and their dollars and support, whatever, and that, that goes for anything in business. That's just the way things go in business. Yeah. If you don't like it, you don't have to support it. Even if you're a fan, there's no rule saying you got to go to the games. You have to watch these games. You don't have to do that. And we're not um, organizing anything. Fans aren't organizing anything because this is the toy store. You know, we're not getting, we, we're not mm-hmm. making money from this. So we're not going to be care. Like we care enough. I care enough. I sit here and do this with, for free. I talk right. to you and everything. Right. And we're passionate about it. But I don't care. I'm not going to pick it outside City Field to to sell the team like the Will Ponds and stuff. That's not going to work. Just don't I go to the games. To go to the game. I think that's that. But your 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 the power is in your money and how you spend it, right? Like that's the that's the true. I mean, one thing one thing we've learned in this country. Just look at history. History of anything across the world. I shouldn't even say in this country. Um, when you want to make a demand against something, showing economic boycott is the is one of the strongest ways you can do it. I mean, look. You can look at this at any country. Anybody yeah. that's opposed anything to actually have change. Uh, hitting people in their pockets is where it's actually really made a, a, a dent in difference, along with just imagery sometimes work too. You know, one of the worst imageries for teams is fans not being at the stadiums. Yeah. They don't the, want to the, show the that on their broadcast. That's an right. seats all over that, that up and down. That's a bad look. It's a bad look, right? The imagery of that is so jarring. It's such a bad look. It's like, damn, nobody even wants to show up for this. Because look what well, we think about right. Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's there mm-hmm. every year. The empty seats all over the place. My co-host nope. for this show, usually he's, he goes down there. He lives down there. with. Uh, he goes down there. His mother lives down there. He said you get playoff tickets for like 15 bucks. Yeah. Supply, supply and demand, right? It's yeah, supply. and it's, any it's, business it's can go there. under. If you yeah. were, When we were younger, if you told us that if somebody said Blockbuster is going to go out of business, we would have laughed them right out of the room. And now look at them. Was, not, yeah, Blockbuster was making money. And if you don't adapt, which is, you know, Blockbuster was maybe slow to get to streaming and the Netflix. Got, yeah. you, Netflix started out as like on demand, get it, you get it, mailing these, it, these, mailing these, it, right? Mailing <laughs> it, right? But then they evolved into something else. I think they're a great example of like you got to evolve, right? Evolution matters. You got to evolve with the business. But the one thing that'll never stop in sports that I believe in, even no matter what changes in sports, presentation, no matter what, all that stuff, you got to win. <laughs> you got to win. So now, you gotta put a good product on the field. Last question for you: Masters yeah. this week. Tiger Woods not having sex. He thinks it's gonna help him be better. Does not having sex to help Tiger Woods in these next couple with couple days? Hey, here's the thing: I don't know all about Tiger's life and his get down, but we know <laughs> we know that uh, it's in your paper. That, the New York Post is where I read it. So, <laughs> hey, we 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 know. L- listen, and the place I work for, they they love they live for these stories. They love that. I, 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 the Post they, loves they, it. They, 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 they love that. <laughs> Um, Tiger, and it's, I find it interesting he said these comments because we know, you know, Tiger's infidelity and all that. His that buddy came said, out. To, no, his buddy leaked it. Oh, to his the, buddy to the said pay. Yeah, his buddy leaked it. He's pissed at his, he's got to be pissed at his buddy. Tiger's what? not saying that. <laughs> I, okay. I, I see. I didn't, cause I hadn't come across that. Now yeah, that, yeah. Now his buddy, mean. his buddy leaked it to the, I think the post. I, let me ask you a question, Bob. If your friend said that about you, I have to look at you like, I'm not sure you're a friend anymore. I'm not sure you are a friend. <laughs> like, I didn't ask you to go talk about what I Yo, am I didn't or say not it. doing. It wasn't country. me. They can't give right. the source away. You know it wasn't me. <laughs> Come on, bro. I wouldn't do that to you. You know that wasn't me. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I'm looking at his friend a little, just a little sideways, right? Because <laughs> he knows what yeah. friend it is. Let's be real. He knows who it is. Oh, he, oh, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. I would have to have a talk with that friend. Do I think it, do I think it, no, do I think it helps him? No, I don't think any of that stuff matters. I think for Tiger what it comes down to is how healthy is he? We saw even stretches, I'm forgetting which tournament was last year, stretches where he could play for a couple of rounds. It's just, it's the, can the body hold up for four rounds with everything that he's been through, all his injuries? That's the thing. And he's I love Tiger. He's 48. Listen, I Tiger, Tiger at his peak, when Tiger was at the height of the height, We've never seen anything like that. They changed the course at Augusta for him. They tiger-proofed the course. Like, think about that, folks. They tiger-proofed it for this man that was dominating the course. We've never seen anything like this, okay? I'd love to see Tiger get back to the levels that he once was. That's probably not going to happen at 48. The question we got to ask ourselves is, does he have two or three more majors in him? Does he even have that? Can he do it? 
clock is really ticking on that. I think he probably needs to get one before he gets on the other side of 50 if he's going to do that. It's possible. He doesn't have two or three. He doesn't even have, he might not even have two or three rounds left in him. Forget about two or three majors. That's the thing. <laughs> we with the last the last major we saw from him was when? That was in 2019, uh, 2019 Masters. Five years ago. That was five his, years like, ago. Because all the great ones have that one where they're older, right? Jack no, had one, and, and and even like Nicholson Faldo. had one. Nick, Nicholson won that one. He's older. What fifty one? Yeah, was something 51. like that. Yeah, yeah. So, like. Could he? But he's got to play like he almost did at that 2019 Masters. I was going to say, I thought it was five years, and it has been five years yeah. already, which is crazy, right? Does he have even one of those left in him? Maybe. He should. You would think maybe. You'd think. But, but it's more about the health. See, that's the thing. I think he still, I still think he can, for his age, he's not going to drive what he once used to, right? But I still think his short game. His short game is what won him all those majors. That's what people don't, people just get impressed by how far he could drive and strong and fit he was, right? But his short game was so impressive. And we saw that even in 2019, he was on top of his short game was, the putting was um, spectacular. If he can putt like that again and is healthy, it's the key is really health. Yeah, his like, back, and his back. If you've had a, ever had a bad back, you know you don't realize what your back, how much you use your back until you, mm-hmm. until you hurt it. And then you're like, oh my God, I use it for everything. And, and then, and then back, you're older. You you're older. You and I, you and I are 40 plus, yeah, right? Yeah, we're getting there. Feeling, we're halfway home, start, brother. We're halfway yeah. home. <laughs> you, start, you start feeling things you didn't feel before, right, yeah, exactly. Bob? Exactly. You start feeling things you didn't feel before. And so as a professional athlete that, that Tiger is and one of the greats of all time, you know, you wonder how good he could be. I think it doesn't have anything to do with what he's doing in the bedroom. It has to do with how healthy he can be on the golf course. And if he's healthy, if he's healthy and he plays, let's say he's in like a top five in the third round, Come this Saturday. Listen, he's no, still he Tiger. Is. Sunday, Sunday, he puts the oh, red. He puts the red on Sunday, and he said he's in the top ten. Watch out. Yeah, he's still ti- He's still Tiger, and I still think there's a presence to him. I don't think he has the fear in the other golfers that he once did 10, 15 years ago. But here's the thing: if Tiger's in contention, and it's Sunday, the crowds are going to be following him. If anybody's ever been to a major and seen this, and I've seen it in person. It is an amazing thing to watch how people will just follow Tiger, the Tiger crowd. It is it's amazing crazy. from hole to hole. You never see anything like that. And the energy around it is what affects the other golfers in a way, more than just his presence and seeing his name. It's that energy around him. If that happens at the Masters, because everybody's going to be behind him to win. Yeah. That. Listen, I'm, I'm rooting for that. I just want oh, yeah. to see Tiger. We Sunday. love our aging want- heroes. We love our aging heroes when they come back and do it one or two more times. But I just don't know if he has it in him. And I've been to a, I've been to the U.S. Open before. I didn't like it, cause you know why? Cause you missed the tournament. You can only follow a golfer or sit on a hole. I'm missing the tournament. And, I, and people say I'm crazy. I because some people like to be like, oh, they, you're right there, two feet from the golfers. I'm like, yeah, but those are 25 year old kids now. Like I'm not sk- like trying to get mm. the players' autographs anymore, cause they're kids. You know. It's, so I, I wasn't crazy about it. I heard Augusta's great though. You've been to the Masters? No, I've only done. Uh... I did the. I was at in Valhalla in Kentucky. I nice. did the PGA tour in 2014. Okay. And I've done U.S. Open too at Bethpage Black. I've done that. I've done that as well too. Um, what I will say about golf majors, and to your point, I get it because you can't really. It's it's really you have to make choices when you're there. Yes. You got to think about how you're going to experience it, and if you got kind of got to pick your golfer, like all right, this is my guy. I'm going to roll with him. We're going to kind of follow him around. And if you're going to pick someone like a Tiger or Phil or Rory, you're going to be around a lot of people. So you better like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you got to be willing to move probably before they hit their final couple shots. You better be, you got to be just a lot of walking. Well, you can pick a hole and sit on the hole and watch pick them all come through. That's, yeah. that's probably your better plan, in my opinion. Depends how you want to watch it. Pick a hole, watch them come through. That's probably the better plan. The other thing I the other thing I think is the one thing that is good, if you get there early to a tournament, the early couple of days, you get there early in the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can watch some of the practice rounds. That's, That's a better go. way to move around. You can watch them, you know, doing some putting or some drive. That's the better way. If you want to get to see a lot of players, get there early a couple of days before. And you, you don't, don't miss the tournament either. And you, get and you the don't course. miss the tournament either. You don't miss the tournament either. And then at the tournament, if you want to pick a hole and be like, hey, I like this hole. I want to check this par four, this par five, whatever. You can do that, and I think it's a good vibe. Even covering it from a, a media standpoint is like you you, you want to go to certain holes, but you kind of also got to keep your eye on other things. So it's it's interesting. 
What'd you, what'd what'd you like, do? You bump, did you bump in Liguori or something from the from the golf? <laughs> nah, this, <laughs> I, I used to work, I used to work for another company that I shot a lot of video from that was based in the UK, and uh, they had me go to. They used to, uh, golf was big for them because obviously golf is so international, so many different players. So I used to get a lot of footage and sound and stuff and send it back for them on that. So I had to I had to do that. But yeah, I met a lot of the, the top people that cover golf. Uh, around some of these events, um, golf, golf is a is a is a really good sport to to cover. It's funny. I actually have uh, this weekend. I have uh, my guy Jeff Eisenband is coming on me from the the PGA. He does stuff for the PGA Tour. He's really good. So we'll talk a lot of. Yeah, I saw you did. A, is that the guy you had on that you had up or already posted? Uh, no, I had that was Kern Batia who actually does a lot of great stuff around golf too. We previewed the Masters. We just did a, that dropped yesterday. Gotcha. Um, he does some great stuff too. So yeah, we like to talk some golf. Mark Canizaro, my colleague from the Post, I'll be sure I'll be talking a lot of Masters with him this weekend. So. Yeah, man. We'll see how it goes this Sunday. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a Tiger fan, so I'm always rooting for oh, Tiger. Yeah, you got to be. Everyone always asks me, like, are you, bad? are you good at golf? I go, nobody's good at golf. I go, it <laughs> takes years. It takes years to become bad at golf. Like, in the beginning, yeah. you're just embarrassing. You're swinging and missing. Yeah. It, it takes years to become bad at golf. And then I, and then, I, then you could worry about stepping forward from there. But anyway, his name is yes. Dexter Henry. Uh, you can find the New York Got Game. Check that out because that's a great basketball show. You can also find him tomorrow. He's going to be doing 2020 flashes on the fan. Uh, CBS Sports Radio, Dexter, thanks a lot for giving us a couple minutes here. Yo, Bob, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Good stuff. Keep up the great work with the podcast. We'll connect again soon. I'll come back on. Thank you, Absolutely. Man. How about that? How about that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Dexter Henry from SNY, WFAN, New York Post. He does it all, and we want to thank him. That was fantastic. Fantastic job. Well, I mean, listen, he's a great guy. He even invited me on his show. So I might be going on his show now. So, hey. Getting big time now, all right? So getting big time. But I'm not going to forget about the little guys. But we want to thank him for, for coming on, giving us a couple minutes. That was great. Thank you to Dexter. And uh, check him out. Listen, I'm going to put you know where you can find him in the, in the show notes and everything. Check him out. You're going to like it. You're going to love it. The, the, the basketball show he does is fantastic. He does plenty of Knicks. He does a lot of baseball. He's a big Mets fan. Listen, check him out. Give him, give him, some, give him some love, everybody. Uh, we'll be back with you Friday and Saturday. Mark Mancini Friday and Brett back with us on Saturday as we get into the Masters, which is coming up in on Thursday. So thank you for joining. Don't forget, subscribe if you're listening on the podcast side. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe there. Leave us a review. Every little bit helps. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you to Dexter Henry from SNY, WFAN, and the New York Post. We'll talk to you Friday, everybody. I'm Bob Walters. See ya.